Hi there everybody, it's Verity here from inkybutterfly.wordpress.com Thank you for joining me today We're going to make some uh, quick Christmas cards today with the Joyful Holly stamp set I really like this because it's really nice and simple and I think it's a really great set for um, beginner crafters to get some really really nice results Okay, so really nice and quick and easy card and we're going to do three in this video in addition to this one and I'm going to show you how we can do it uh, using our Stamparatus tool okay so just just quickly the consumables uh, that we're, we've got ready are three real red card bases so you want some of those so a bit of prep and then the rest will be really really easy and then the front panels we've got whisper white uh, panels which are three inches by four and three quarters And then the granny, this is granny apple green, which is three and one eighth by four and seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so those are all our panels are ready to go. Okay, we've got some cardstock for stamping on and some vellum. And we've got the two inch and two and a quarter inch um, circle punches. If you've got dies and you're happy using them, then you could do that too. Um, or use um, another label punch or something like that that will fit uh, the sentiment so use what you have and then I've got some red sheer ribbon uh, for the finishing touch okay so the most important part is our Stamparatus tool which I've already prepped because I made my sample so once you've got your Stamparatus set up the rest of the process is going to be really, really easy. Okay, so your first card is going to take you a little longer, but the rest is going, to, rest that follow, will be really, really, really quick. Just want to put my stamp case under there so that. Um, sorry, the lights are going to flick about on there, aren't they? Okay, um, that supports the the stamping window. I've just got some scrap on there so I don't get my surface dirty. So what I did was um, I decided where my uh, little piece of card was going to go and that's why this little piece of tape is here and put it up against the, um, the bar there. The magnet's going to go somewhere around there but we'll tweak it in a minute. And I positioned my stamps onto the cardstock um, in uh, an arrangement that I liked. So I just want to make sure that I'm not hitting this magnet or the tape around it sort of thing. So I just want to move that out of the way. Okay, so you can see here I positioned the stamps and they fit well within that um, cardstock area. Okay, and we're going to ink that with shaded spruce. Okay, so that's off over here. So uh, with the Stamparatus you do need to take your ink pad to the stamp. Keep it as flat as you can. Don't worry too much if ink goes onto the plate itself, it will not transfer. I'm going to bring that window across and give it a firm press or sort of a slide if you like. Some people use a cloth to help them push over the, um, over the surface and then just lift it gently. Okay, because there's a bit of um, suction, shall we say, from the, the stamp itself and then your second plate is attaches at the top here and as you can see what I've done is I have positioned the infill stamps so that they will go over the top of there and the infill is going to be done with granny apple green okay. um, if I was hand stamping this card I probably would have used second generation shaded spruce but because we're using the Stamparatus and we want some nice, quick and easy results, I chose Granny Apple as the complementary colour. Again, just gently press that over. Nice firm pressure. Not, not hard. And you get this great stamped image. Okay. So now it's going to be dead easy for us to take out that piece of cardstock. Um, if I hadn't got it behind the window, it would be even easier. And I'm going to bring in my next piece. Just check 
because that's not going to hit the magnet and we will do it again shaded spruce down and up granny apple green at the top sorry did you get my elbow right in your view then bottom leaf hasn't quite See there's um, ink on that window there, but it's not going to transfer at all, not even to my surface, so that's fine. So there's two done. Let's do the third one. Shaded spruce. I thought the shaded spruce would look better than the than a black outline. Gently. One last time with the granny apple green. Like so. And there we are. Three stamped panels done. Quick as a flash. Okay. So the, the two panels won't um Sit together on the on the uh, on the platform, so we're just going to put those away, just as they are for the moment. I hope they don't go crashing down. There we are, that's it. So we can bring in these now, and I'm going to. There is a stamp in the set that you can um, colour in the berries with, um, but I'm just going to go over them with a marker. This happens to be a stamping blend. Uh, this is the light real red that complements the cardstock on the card base. But you could just as easily use the stamp and write marker. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, or all the stamp, obviously. Okay, so I just thought it would be nice and quick. And just shows you some different options. Um, of course, you could colour the the holly leaves yourself as well. You don't have to use the stamp to do so. But when it's as quick and easy to get three card toppers like this, why wouldn't you really? But of course, if you're making something extra special for someone, that might be what you want to do. Okay, so that's nice and quick to do. Okay, brilliant. We can get those layered up straight away. Turn those over. Get our three uh, granny apple green um, layers. So I even do these in batches. It's just if you get all the glue on and get them all lined up. Like so. It's be a nice narrow border and it just brings out the green on the leaves. Um, you could use shaded spruce instead. Use what you have. Uh, I've gone with real red as my car base. You could use poppy parade or cherry cobbler as well. And then, of course, you could um, mix it all entirely. You could have a shaded spruce card base and pick out the red um, in other ways too. This is going to go onto the card bases with um, dimensional adhesive. So we're going to stick those on. This is probably um, more time consuming than doing the stamping. <laughs> there we are. Take those off. 
I wanted you to see this in full, uh, so I've tried to do as little press as possible, apart from cutting the cards off. Which again wouldn't take long, and that's a task you could do um, on one evening, get all, everything cut, and then get all your stamping done. And then do the assembly as a as a separate task. And then we'll take our card bases and get those stuck down. Of course, I've got limited space on my desk, so you will be able to spread yourself out a little bit more, uh, especially as I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So there we go. Bank number one. Chair squeaking. Number two. Oops. I've scored that so well I can't open it. And number three. So I happen to use both the images to stamp at the same time. You could equally, if you can imagine, um, I had my stamp up the top there. If I could stamp that, twizzle it round and then stamp it at the bottom as well. So you'd get like a, uh, an, a symmetrical, if you like, um, image. But I, I decided just to go with the, uh, the straight on. So now we've got our three card bases ready. We're going to use our two and a quarter inch punch and get, and get three circles. One, two, three. So this, I added the vellum just as a little extra something. You don't necessarily need to. So those are ready. And then we're going to stamp our sentiment. May your season be merry and bright. And we're going to use our Granny Apple Green ink for that. So we're going to tap lightly into the ink pad. And I'm going to stamp this in the corners to make sure I've got room to punch around them. Light tapping. Just make sure it's all well inked. Sound pressure up and off. Easy peasy, really great for beginners. And then we're going to bring in our two inch punch. And if you hold it upside down like this, you can see that the sentiment's going to end up in the middle. Circles are quite forgiving for lining things up. No straight edges to worry about. There we go, three of those done. I'm going to put those onto our vellum circles just with some stamp and seal. We'll be adding those with dimensionals too. So just want a couple of those on there. Backing's come off nice and easy. And then we can add those to our card. So I like to um, put these over to one side so they're just overlapping that border slightly. Somewhere around there. As long as the text looks straight, you can you put that wherever you want. So I'm going to go with that. And yeah, you cover up a couple of the berries, but... 
you don't know that until you start preparing it. And so this is quite a large circle. Could have been smaller with um, some dies, but I wanted to avoid using dies for this project as a simple um, beginner's project. So there we are. The only thing to add is our ribbon bows. So I'm going to cut about 8 inches. Which is more than enough, but you want enough to be able to tie your bow and be able to um, get your ends, your tails even. So if you make two bunny ears and then just tie a single knot, let the ends do what they want to do. Okay, and then you can pull it tighter and make your loops the size you want. I don't want too big a bow, so that isn't the greatest one in the world, but you get the idea. And because we're looking to do these quickly, I'm not going to mess with that too much. Here's number three, bunny ears, and wrap around. Lots of different ribbons you could use. Um, I did think about just using white actually just to um but I felt like um I wanted to pull out the red of the berries a little bit more last one and equal uh, you could of course do a knot as well if you really wanted to but if um if you struggle tying Oops. So those tails have gone a little bit awry, but we'll just go with it for now. Okay, so the best thing to tie, um, sorry, to adhere bows to projects are glue dots so you can just press on that glue dot peel it off and position that on the card I need some more of these and almost run out oh that one is really wibbly might have to redo that one after but you get the idea not tight enough on those but you get the idea and then you just cut your tails to make them look even and pretty or prettier anyway I'll say that just that needs a bit of retying I think <laughs> doesn't always work first time sticking up in the air but again I can sort that out afterwards okay three cards done that was the original which did this bow bow turned out a lot better on this one okay quick as a flash so if you've got um, a lot of cards to send this would be a really great project for you guys um, as ever the um, the details and some more photographs will be in my blog post which I'll link below along with all the products that I've used today. Uh, I'd really appreciate um, if, uh, if you have liked this video if you give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already please do subscribe. I'd love to have you uh, on board and of course if you would like to purchase any of the products uh, I'd love, love to see you uh, in my online store too. Thanks ever so much for joining me today I hope you've enjoyed that. Take care, everybody, and I will see you all again soon. Take care. Bye.